Hello, this is William Wayland, uh, strength and conditioning coach, CSCS, uh, owner of Powering Through Performance and strength and conditioning coach for the European Tour. Um, I've kindly been asked by Keir to do another seminar, um, webinar, on um, a, a subject that I've been digging into and uh, exploring now for uh, a little while, well over a year um, I've been exploring this. And it's the idea of pragmatism and how this influences uh, strength and conditioning. And the focus of this uh, webinar is going to be talking about nuance, scientism, and how this affects coaching. Um, so let's talk about pragmatism and strength and conditioning because I honestly believe that all strength and conditioning coaches are pragmatists at heart. Um, and that we really do do need pragmatism as a philosophy. Um, now, this is important. We have to distinguish that this is not the same as a strength and conditioning philosophy. So this isn't the same as sets and reps and things like that. This is how we operate in the world, how we deduct things, how we figure things out, apply, and then make changes as we go. And uh, I'm going to go over why pragmatism conceptually uh, is so important. And part of the main reason uh, is this, is that um, especially in this day and age, there's a big disillusion with, uh, disillusionment with academia. Um, academia has uh, a lot of problems in terms of uh, institutionalization, uh, the influence on thinking, um, and for instance, at the moment, there's a reproducibility crisis happening in psychology, and sports science needs to be very careful, monitor closely, uh, that we don't end up with any similar type of lack of uh, viability and uh, thoroughness in, in the information we're producing. Um, pragmatism also covers and protects us ideally against the dangers of scientism where it's where things sound scientific they can seem convincing but uh, in action uh, they're flawed and the other idea is this with pragmatism and you'll hear uh, Keir for instance and other guys talk about how um, you know, training is testing and testing is training um, and this speaks to the idea that chasing metrics and employer metrics are two diff very different things. You can either be a slave to data accumulation or you can take that data and um, you know make something of it. Uh, it's very easy to get stuck chasing numbers in the weight room, chasing numbers on a field, but ultimately fundamentally what is, what is important uh, is game day, performance outcomes. Did you win? Did you lose? And, and, and these are the things that perhaps need to be remembered sometimes when people can get bogged down uh, heavily in uh, statistical analyses such and so forth is perhaps to go back and make sure you have a good question that you're trying to answer in the first place and this is that idea of uh, idealism versus practicality so you know ideal scenarios uh, are just that uh, you know what happens when the rubber hits the road the environment starts to play its part um, we've got to make sure that things don't fall apart. So some of you may well recognize these two gentlemen we have in this uh, delightful, uh, you know, convertible, I think it's a mini or something, in the Sim Taleb and um, Barbell Curmudgeon himself, uh, Mark Ripto. And um, <laughs> I feel this image is kind of important uh, because you've got someone who uh, in the strength and conditioning sense is very much meat and potatoes type training, very barbell oriented, uh, very um, tried and tested, uh, simplified approach to um, achieving outcomes. Um, you know, Mark himself has had a number of criticisms. I believe there are articles you can go and read where he talks about sports specific training and sports science uh, basically being a lot of nonsense. And while I feel that uh, some of his statements are perhaps not particularly uh, true, you've got to pay attention to these voices because it reminds us and it takes us back to the idea, well, what's the question we're trying to answer? What's the problem we're trying to solve? 